Hey, East Coast Lumberjack. So, part two in our series on what wood, what hardwood species are best for what application and, and how should the grain be oriented. So th this is number two. It's about ring porous versus diffuse porous hardwoods. And you're probably saying, what on earth is this guy talking about? Um, remember last video, we talked about um, how, a tr how a wood grows, how a tree grows. And we talked about early wood and late wood. And of course, early wood is formed early in the growth season. They have thinner walls and uh, they're bigger cells. And then of course, as you get into the late summer, early fall, you get the, uh, it slows down, the tree growth slows down, you get a lot thicker walled cells, so it's a lot stronger wood. And of course, that's what causes the growth ring. So I wanna show you that. I've got a couple of pieces of wood here. And uh, I'm gonna use some, uh, the old BLO, boiled linseed oil. Um, if you want a tree to handle, boiled linseed oil is probably one of the best things to use on it. It uh, seals the moisture out and uh, keeps it roughly at the same same moisture content in the handle because moisture is what causes you problems in your handles. So if you've got issues with uh, wedges coming loose, uh, splitting and stuff, what's happening is your handle is going through a lot of change. It's, it's uh, taking on moisture and then losing it again and that's probably the worst thing for a handle so boiled linseed oil and you see i'm putting it on this wood here so we can see it a little bit more clearly is uh is a great sealant for that any kind of in all honesty any kind of oil even us lumberjacks when we were competing a lot we would the oil from our hands would actually seal the wood and actually uh, do the same thing for us so it was pretty uh pretty beneficial so any kind of oil will do that of course oil and water don't mix uh, oil will keep the water out and uh, the reason I'm doing it is because once you put uh, a little bit of oil on, you can actually see the growth rings a little bit better. So I'm putting, uh, I'm putting some oil on this so that we can see what I want you to see here a lot more clearly. So in hardwood trees, unlike softwood, softwoods are pretty straight ahead. They have, uh, they have early wood and late wood. And the late wood is really dark. And of course, if you think of pines and spruces and stuff, it's usually quite e easy to... Uh, count the rings on those trees because the early wood and the late wood is quite different. Early wood is very light in color. The late wood is very dark in color and you can see the, the uh, rings quite clearly on softwood trees. And hardwoods sometimes it's a little bit different. Um, one thing that hardwoods produce that softwoods don't are something called vessels. And vessels are basically they're like straws. If you want to, the, the easiest thing to, to think about is it's like a straw or basically a hollow cell in the hardwood and some of them go vertical and some of them go horizontal the ones that go up through the tree vertical um, they're called uh, they're uh, pores and that's what we call ring uh, ring porous and diffuse porous which means where are those straws located now this is an ash now as far as ring porous hardwoods your oaks your ashes your elms your hickories are all ring porous and what they are, if you looked, if you took an arrow chocolate bar and broke it in half and looked at the end of it, you'd see all those little bubbles. If you look really closely at diffuse porous hardwoods, you'll see the same thing. And right along the, in the early wood, you'll see that there's all this little ring of bubbles. Okay? So when the hardwood tree is growing, ring porous hardwoods is growing, early in the season when they're putting on the most growth, they have a lot of these uh, uh, pores that they put on those little vessels in the early wood. And it's very easy to see. I've got a good picture of it here that I'll show you um, when I was looking at how to explain this best. So here's a picture. Okay, and you can see it really clearly here. You can see the vessels when they're growing. Up here is where they're actually put on um, in the early wood. This is the late wood. It's darker. And you see in the early wood, you see all those little bubbles? Okay. <clears throat> That's what helps you actually determine what species of wood it is. And it also helps you a lot with determining... Uh, strength of the wood and also application so your oaks your ashes your elms your hickories are all ring porous hardwoods and those vessels actually absorb shock okay so because they're like that arrow chocolate bar there's a lot of little air bubbles in there it'll actually absorb shock your diffuse porous, uh, porous hardwoods and this is a maple here I'll put that up close you can see the growth rings here a bit Okay, but you see that you don't see those rings like we had before. That's because in diffuse porous hardwoods, 
Those little straws occur all throughout the wood, in early wood and in late wood both. So diffuse porous hardwoods are usually denser wood, and because they're a denser wood, they're actually they're good for prying applications. So anything where you use a tool where you, you're going to bend the handle, that's where diffuse porous hardwoods are good. And that those are things like maples, birches, uh, ironwoods, beeches, stuff like that. They're diffuse porous hardwoods, and they're good for that application. They don't have these rings of vessels. So actually, when you put them in an axe, and you, there's nothing that says you can or cannot do it. You can put whatever wood you want in whatever axe or handle you want. That's perfectly up to you. However, what I would tell you is that if you use those... Uh, um, diffuse porous hardwoods in that application where you're striking another object, whether it's a hammer, an axe, even a baseball bat. Typically our baseball bats are what? Ash, um, uh, hickory, and now they started making them out of maple. So, you know, you can use diffuse porous uh, hardwoods for that application, but the problem is you get a lot more vibration. Okay, so they're probably tougher, that you can use them in anything, but uh, like I said before, ring porous, absorb shock, Okay, a lot better for uh, applications where you're striking another object. Diffuse porous don't have that layer, that ring of vessels. So the, the, the vessels are all throughout it. And of course, there's a lot fewer of them. So they can be used for other applications, but they're better in things like a PV where you have to pry. Okay, so that's the difference between ring porous and diffuse porous. And I think we all understand now that, uh, you know, the as far as rings go of, of uh, straws or the uh, ring porous hardwoods, they're better for striking applications. Diffuse porous hardwoods, which have the vessels all throughout, they're a denser wood, they're better for prying applications. Okay, that's where they're best used. Doesn't mean that's the only place. I've got some uh, ironwood axe handles here. I, I haven't hung them because I don't want to feel the vibration, but you can use wood for anything. Okay, East Coast Lumberjack, signing off.